Hey guys, thanks for watching Beyond Science. Let's talk time travel. Just because time travel seems impossible, does that mean it can happen? And also, has it already been achieved and, and maybe we just don't know about it yet? Thinking about these things might make your head explode a little bit considering all the possibilities. So thankfully, a far greater mind took up the challenge over 100 years ago. And I'm talking about Albert Einstein. In 1905, he began publishing his famous theory of relativity, which is the gold standard for all work in the field of physics. It's the perfect way to look at time travel. But first, let me let me break it down for you. Before Einstein came along, physicists relied on Isaac Newton in his three laws of motion. The most famous of these is for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And equals and opposites are key to how Einstein formulated his theory. He defined his breakthrough by determining the speed and mass of objects through their relation to one another. And he found that while some things may be opposite in terms of size and velocity, when it came to the speed of light, they were definitely equal. In other words, according to him, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers or 186,000 miles per second. And of course, it gave rise to the famous calculation of E equals mc squared. This means energy equals mass multiplied by the speed of light squared. An essential math lesson which had good results for physics, but really bad results for humanity, as it helped to create the principles of the atomic bomb. Now, in fairness to Einstein, he didn't foresee the hostile use of his ideas to create weapons of mass destruction. He may have taken comfort in the fact that the theory of relativity is all around us in positive ways. Things like GPS are driven by Einstein's concept, so we'd be quite literally lost without him. Now, Einstein didn't come up with his theory all in one go. That'd be a little too clever even for him. By 1905, he cracked what he called special relativity. This applies to objects that are moving at a constant speed in a straight line and everything peaks at the speed of light when its mass becomes infinite. As for things that vary in speed while doing zigzags, that's a story for another time. Einstein toiled away for another 10 years exploring the effects of acceleration on special relativity, and this resulted in the idea of general relativity. So Einstein's show was now well and truly on the road. General relativity gave people a true insight into the nature of time travel and how achievable it is. So let me explain. The notion of time travel travel has been part of human history for centuries, dating back as far as Hindu mythology. And in a sense, we all travel in time. For example, if a man was born in 1900 and died in 2000, he aged 100 years and he would have traveled across a century. But what if that could be altered so the man could go forward or indeed back through the decades in a short space of time? Let me use pop culture for a second here. The 2014 movie Interstellar nailed the concept of Einstein's theory perfectly. The film, if you've seen it, concerns traveling beyond Earth to find new planets to live on. Having journeyed into the depths of space, the crew then visits potential worlds, leaving one of their members behind. They spend a relatively brief period of time down there, yet when they return, their crew member aged considerably. So how is this possible? The answer lies in speed and gravitational fields, the essence of general relativity. Because time passes at different speeds, depending on whether you're on the planet's surface, or under its gravity, or orbiting above it. And time would move far slower down below than it would up high. So what would be minutes for you could be months for the poor guy on top. These distortions are important to the study of any potential time travel, and you might have heard of wormholes which are talked about a lot in science fiction including Interstellar, and they are of course only theoretical, involving mixing two black holes together before separating them. Certainly not something we're going to be doing anytime soon. But if there was some kind of gravitational tunnel, you could possibly move along it, crossing hundreds of years in an instant. So time travel is doable in this sense by exploiting the physical nature of the universe rather than, you know, having a time machine. And of course, if somebody or some government achieves time travel in the future by using these principles, then there could be clues throughout history to suggest its existence. For example, a painting of a woman sculpted in the 19th century became the subject of speculation when it was thought that she held an iPhone in her hand. But there is one major flaw in thinking time travel exists. If such a thing had been invented, then shouldn't we have stopped events such as I don't know, the birth of Hitler? And having said that, of course, interfering with space-time can be catastrophic, which is why many fictional time travelers want to observe rather get their hands dirty, except for, you know, this guy right here. Because as most of us know, the smallest alteration could change the whole course of human development. So unless you're this guy, some might wonder if time travel is really worth the hassle. But let me know, guys, let's say you had a time machine. You could go anywhere in the past, anywhere in the future. What would you do with it? Where would you go? All right, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you later.